You're watching Colorado's News Channel. This is News 4 at 5. A scathing report today on the Columbine attack, how it could have been prevented. Before this occurred, there had been some warnings. And how officers should have responded. Plus, pointed criticism at the man in charge, Sheriff John Stone. Uh, he provided no information and stonewalled our commission. But some parents of Columbine victims believe it doesn't go far enough. I'd be ashamed if I were the governor to put something out like this. A report that not only outlines missed opportunities, but also lessons learned. Some are stunned at what they call the brevity of the report. They say it glosses over what led up to the shootings and doesn't go far enough detailing the police response when Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold were inside Columbine shooting. The commission appointed by Governor Owens began its work behind closed doors in December of 1999. The 10-member commission revealed its findings today. The 200-page report analyzes warning signs that were ignored, what went wrong at the scene, and how to avoid a similar tragedy. News 4's Rick Salinger is at the Capitol with a closer look at the report. Rick? Bill, when the governor appointed the commission, he said the object was not to lay blame, but rather to look to the future. 18 months later, the results are in. Two years after America's worst school shooting, the governor's commission is offering criticism and recommendations. The report takes on the question, could the shootings have been prevented? Many people had pieces of information about the perpetrators well before they launched their attack, it reads, but that information was never acted upon. Commission Chairman Justice William Erickson referred to a prior search warrant for the home of gunman Eric Harris. If the search warrant that was originally uh, proposed had been issued, uh, this probably wouldn't have occurred. But it did happen, and the commission found problems establishing a command center, the first police responders not adequately trained or equipped to take on the gunman. And when the full SWAT team members arrived, the policy was to establish a perimeter and wait rather than go inside. These teams clearly did not function expeditiously under the circumstances which existed at Columbine. Um, I think it's clear that the police response needs improvement. The commission noted problems with lack of building plans and the failure to reach teacher Dave Sanders, who bled to death. Uh, they should have reached Sanders. Other problems included police agencies on different radio frequencies, inability to turn off wailing fire alarms inside the building, and not believing a student who said there were two gunmen and they were in the library where 10 students were killed. That was ignored, and no assault uh, was ever made to try to prevent these executions. The report does contain recommendations. First responders should be trained to handle an armed assault. A statewide police communication system is necessary, and a threat assessment team is needed at every school. The objects of the commission report to prevent another Columbine and if that fails, to be better prepared. And there are many other recommendations, but that's all they are, recommendations. No mandatory implementation. Bill? Rick, I would guess the governor would have some say in whether these recommendations uh, are, are implemented in some way. Well, it's his commission, and he would certainly like to see the recommendations implemented, but he says there are no plans at this time for any further meetings, and the commission is disbanded. Copies of the report will be sent out. Rick Salinger at the Capitol. The commission was highly critical of Jefferson County Sheriff John Stone. The chairman said Stone would not cooperate with its investigation, that Stone broke appointments to testify and did not turn over material. Sheriff Stone was also criticized for the police response to Columbine. Stone recently defended that response in an interview with News 4's Brian Moss. Did what we could do by the book, the best we knew how, with the resources we had available at the time. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was pretty chaotic. The sheriff's office released a statement today saying it may not agree with all the conclusions or every point made in the report. Coming up at 5.30, much more of Brian's interview with Sheriff Stone. Some of the victims' families are saying the 200-page report is nothing more than a political move. News 4's Sean Boyd has their reaction. Sean? Well, Teresa, the governor says he commissioned this report to get answers about Columbine. You ask some of those close to the case, they say he failed miserably. So, uh, of course, this report, in my opinion, isn't even worth the paper it's printed on. 
Brian Rohrbaugh unloaded on the governor's task force, calling this commission cowards and this report fluff. It, there was a lot of warnings here, and this report makes it look like there really wasn't any warning. Rohrbaugh's son, Danny, was killed in the April 20th massacre. He wanted an investigation. Instead, he says he got excuses. And it's really unfortunate that any public official would be so scared of finding the truth that they would set up a taxpayer paid commission to do absolutely nothing. Judy and Randy Brown also blasted the governor. The couple warned the sheriff's department about Eric Harris long before the shooting. They are a footnote in the 200 page report. But Governor Owens will not talk to us, and I'm tired of hearing it fell between the cracks. That's not an answer. If the cracks are that big, how's that building standing up? The task force did talk to Betty Scholes, but she says it ignored her. Her son, Isaiah, one of the victims. She asked the panel to address racism at the school. After I got in from the commission and poured my heart out to them on the problems, it's still happening today. They still ignore me. My government has failed me. Brian Rohrbaugh says it failed the victims, too. I, I guess the idea that, hey, only 13 people died, it's not that big a deal, kind of rings through this report. Rohrbaugh says the governor should have given the commission subpoena power to force Sheriff John Stone to testify, but the governor says he doesn't have that power. Rohrbaugh and the families of several other victims have filed suit against the sheriff's department and the school district. Teresa. And, Sean, the Jefferson County School District praised the Columbine report. The district says it's already implementing several of the recommendations in that report, including bully prevention programs, a hotline to report threats, and a school crisis plan. The Columbine report includes very specific recommendations. So what happens next? The report will be distributed to police agencies, schools, and community organizations across Colorado. But the governor's office tells News 4 there is no requirement that those agencies and schools implement any of the recommendations in the report. A messy million-dollar fire means the weekend has already started for students. Harsh words for law enforcement. That was ignored, and no assault uh, was ever made to try to prevent these executions. And harsh words for the governor and his Columbine commission. Is Governor Owens just appointing a committee, or is he really interested in what happened here? Parents and politicians are at odds tonight over the findings. The governor's Columbine Review Commission issued its report today, and here are the major findings. The commission found that Jeffco authorities failed to act on numerous warning signs. It also recommended that Colorado schools set up threat assessment teams and that law enforcement train for large-scale school emergencies. News Force Terry Jessup is at the Capitol where the report was delivered. He joins us with more of the criticism. Nobody seems really happy over this, Terry. Well, I don't think so, Bill. Uh, this commission report uh, was critical of nearly every aspect of the police action in regard to the Columbine tragedy, what they did not do before, as you mentioned, by ignoring warning signs and what they did not do after the assault began. Over a thousand people. The review commission chairman said there were a number of red flags to prevent the tragedy, including threats on the internet and bomb making materials that sheriff's deputies would have recovered had they simply executed a search warrant they'd prepared for Eric Harris's home a year before the attack. If the search warrant that was originally uh, proposed had been issued, uh, this probably wouldn't have occurred. And once the two killers began their assault, the commission chairman said police made no effort to stop it. They shot uh, Evan uh, Todd, who was able to get out and tell the police that there were only two shooters and told how they were armed. That was ignored, and no assault uh, was ever made to try to prevent these executions. Randy and Judy Brown, who tried to warn authorities about Harris and Klebold after their son was threatened, were angered by the commission report said it merely recited facts instead of demanding an internal investigation of the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. When are the police department going to investigate? We asked for an internal investigation and we got a dismissive letter. They are not investigating over there. They're simply regurgitating the facts. It's disgusting. And this report also said that Eric Harris's website contents, in its words, virtually screamed the gunman's murderous intentions. And finally, the commission chairman said that Columbine school teacher Dave Sanders 
uh, should have been gotten to earlier. As you recall, he lay bleeding for several hours before rescue crews got to him. The commission said that should not have happened. Bill? Thanks, Terry. Several Columbine families have filed lawsuits claiming the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department could have done more to prevent the attack. The commission is critical of Jefferson County Sheriff John Stone. Its report notes that Stone ordered some of the officers out of the school during the attack and that no command post was established. Commission Chairman William Erickson criticized Stone for refusing to appear before the panel. Uh, he provided no information and stonewalled our commission. Stone was not willing to comment today about the report, but the sheriff's office did issue a statement. It says they appreciate the efforts of the commission and believe it was written in good faith. Recently, Sheriff Stone has said very little, but he did sit down and talk with News 4's Brian Moss. Brian is here. Brian, you did address a number of Columbine issues when you talked with the sheriff. Yeah, wide-ranging interview that we did last week with Sheriff Stone. A lot was on his mind. Clearly, Sheriff Stone wishes the Columbine controversy would simply go away. And he pointed out that some of the things he is being blamed for, like not acting on clues about potential violence from Harrison Klebold, happened before he took office. I asked him, though, why didn't he speak to the commission? I know uh, the Chief Justice was angry at me for not appearing in the thing. I had every intention in the world of do doing so, but uh, I was uh, instructed by, you know, the legal staff not to. I was concerned also about losing... Um, indemnification for myself and my officers for testifying before the commission. The justice has already made it clear that they're going to be very critical of, I think as they sort of phrased it, uh, that the sheriff's department over overlooked advance indications um, and uh, they're going to apparently be critical of the SWAT response. How's that going to be for Well, you? you'd have to walk in those shoes to really know it. It's easy to Monday morning quarterback something, but unless you were there and really knew what happened, you know, I can't speak for things that happened before I was here. As far as them being critical of those, I, I wasn't in, in office at that time. Um, you know, that you know, I guess in a perfect world, we wouldn't have these things happen, but, uh, you know, we did what we could do by the book, the best we knew how, with the resources we had available at the time. And it was, it was, it was pretty chaotic. There's been a lot of discussion, too, about people who have been calling for a state grand jury to look into the investigation. Have at it. I was going to ask you about that. Have at it. We've done nothing wrong. Don't feel like you have anything to hide? No. So you'd be comfortable with a state grand jury looking into it? You know, I, I would just like to see some peace come to this community and closure to Columbine. I, I don't want my life to every day be Columbine. As we mentioned, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office did release a statement today suggesting the department did not agree with all the conclusions in the report. A spokesman for Sheriff Stone says the sheriff is out of town and is deferring comment until he's had a chance to read the entire 200-page report. But he did address many of those issues, Brian. A week, before, uh, week before the report came out, he did talk about some of these issues. Brian, thank you. The 15-member review commission met 15 times and analyzed 15,000 pages of documents. The report did not attempt to blame a specific person or agency. The commission says its purpose was to prepare a report that will help prevent school attacks in the future. Vacationing in Colorado can put a dent in your wallet. So what if you could do it all? Talk full of recommendations. We can only hope that we've learned from this tragedy. But some say it lacks substance and even worth the paper it's printed on. The Governor's Columbine Review Commission releases its report, stirring up even more bad feelings and a lot of finger pointing. News 4 at 10 starts now. You're watching Colorado's News Channel. This is News 4 at 10. The Columbine High School attack could have been prevented. That's according to the Governor's Task Force, a group of 10 people commissioned to analyze what happened at Columbine? The report says that Sheriff John Stone missed several red flags leading up to the shooting, that the school district should have done more to head off the tragedy, and that law enforcement was slow in responding to a large-scale emergency. News 4's Rick Salinger read the report, has, res uh, has the response, good and bad, on what it has to say. 18 months, 15 hearings, and 140 witnesses later, this is the result. A blueprint with recommendations for the future, but no requirement for implementation. The report was not designed to lay blame, but there was still plenty of room for criticism. I think it's clear that the police response needs improvement. There were complaints that the incident command center was not in control. SWAT response was attacked saying the teams did not function expeditiously. 
As a result, some officers entered the building to try to pursue the shooters and were ordered out by the sheriff. Other problems cited included police agencies unable to communicate on different radio frequencies, screaming fire alarms that wouldn't turn off, and lack of building plans partially responsible for teacher Dave Sanders bleeding to death. Uh, they should have reached Sanders. Perhaps the most damning finding was the failure of the sheriff's department to follow through on a search of the home of gunman Eric Harris months before the shootings. If the search warrant that was originally uh, proposed had been issued, uh, this probably wouldn't have occurred. But it did occur, and now this commission report might help prevent another such incident in the future. The report does contain recommendations. Among them, first responders to the scene should be trained to handle an armed assault. A statewide police communication system is necessary, and a threat assessment team is needed at every school. The Jefferson County School District says it's already implementing several of the recommendations in the report, including bully prevention programs, a hotline to report threats, and a school crisis plan. The commission was highly critical of Jefferson County Sheriff John Stone. The commission chair said Stone would not cooperate with the investigation, that he broke appointments to testify and didn't turn over material. The sheriff's department issued a written statement today suggesting it might not agree with all the conclusions in the report. A week ago, Sheriff Stone talked to News 4 about the criticism he expected from the Columbine report. Well, you'd have to walk in those shoes to really know it. It's easy to Monday morning quarterback something, but unless you were there and really knew what happened, you know, I can't speak for things that happened before I was here. As far as I'm being critical of those, I, I wasn't in, in office at that time. Um, you know, that, you know, I guess in a perfect world, we wouldn't have these things happen, but, uh, you know, we did what we could do by the book, the best we knew how, with the resources we had available at the time. Some of the victims' families say the sheriff is making excuses and that the governor is too. They say the report is simply a political move that doesn't begin to address the real concerns. News 4's Sean Boyd is live at the Capitol tonight with reaction from some of the families. Sean? Well, the families we spoke with say this report doesn't break any new ground. In fact, one father calls this fluff and calls the commission cowards for not hammering the sheriff's department harder. Just really a waste of time. And no sooner did the commission release its report than families unleashed a storm of criticism. I'd be ashamed if I were the governor to put something out like this. Brian Rohrbaugh's son died in the shooting. He says everyone knows the sheriff's department made mistakes. He wants to know why. This report, he says, gave excuses, not answers. There was a lot of warnings here, and this report makes it look like there really wasn't any warning. Judy and Randy Brown, among those who warned the sheriff's department about Eric Harris. That was mentioned in the report in fine print. But Governor Owens will not talk to us, and I'm tired of hearing it fell between the cracks. That's not an answer. If the cracks are that big, how's that building standing up? The Browns say the report glosses over the facts. Isaiah Scholl's aunt says it doesn't even touch her concern, racism at Columbine. After I got in from the commission and poured my heart out to them, on the problems. It's still happening today. They still ignore me. My government has failed me. But where it may have failed, Brian Rohrbaugh says he'll succeed. The only possible way to know the truth about Columbine is going to be for those lawsuits that have been filed to proceed into a courtroom. Rohrbaugh is among several families suing the Sheriff's Department and the Jefferson County School District. The sheriff told the commission that pending litigation is why he couldn't testify, and the governor says he doesn't have the power to subpoena the sheriff. Amy. Thanks, Sean. The Columbine report does include some very specific recommendations. So what happens next? Well, the report will be distributed to police agencies, schools, and community organizations across Colorado. But there is no requirement that those agencies or schools implement any of the recommendations included in the report. 1,600 Denver High School students will have another unexpected day off tomorrow. East. And it got. For this Jefferson County girl, her story is next. And she never returned home from her internship in Washington, D.C. School leaves an eighth grader in tears and her parents asking why school officials didn't step in. As Fox 31's Sari Fedora tells us, the student says the bullying and harassment have gone on for two years. 
14-year-old Kalia Seal can't understand why kids at Moore Middle School pick on her. It's hard to wake up in the morning and just put up, because I know, like, every day that I'm going to get harassed. I just get called names when I walk down the hall, and people threaten to beat me up and kill me. It's a problem Kalia and her parents have repeatedly brought to the attention of school officials through these incident reports. I just come home and cry, and I don't know. I just wish I wasn't alive sometimes. He says she could see why kids commit suicide. Kalia's mom says school officials haven't done much to stop the problem. They never would take me serious. Um, even going up there and talking to him face to face, I always felt like that they just thought it would blow over. Bullying is not acceptable. School district officials say Columbine taught them a lesson. We can't ignore any incidents. It doesn't mean it matter if it's the first day of school or the last day of school. Saltzman says they will look into the problems, but Kalia calls that an empty promise. It hurts. It really does. Sari Fedor, Fox 31 News. Kalia plans to go to a different school next year. The United Airlines Union wants. County isn't being truthful. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Benneman. I'm Adele Arakawa. The father of Daniel Rohrbaugh accuses law enforcement of killing his son. Rohrbaugh was shot three times outside Columbine High School. His father says he is trying to get answers about who fired the shots, and he says investigators' accounts don't provide those. Nine News reporter Cheryl Preheim is at the Jeffco Sheriff's Department. Cheryl, Brian Rohrbaugh provided documents he says support his claims. Yes, the family says test results done on the bullets that killed their son do not add up with the information given on the final report made public. Now, Jefferson County Sheriff's Department just moments ago said it's just an oversight, but the Rohrabahs say it is proof they've been lied to again about how their son died. Oh, I think it indicates a lie. Danny Rohrbaugh's parents and step-parents say Jefferson County Sheriff's documents show law enforcement could have killed their son. The report released to the public concluded that a bullet from Dylan Klebold's Tech 9 gun killed Danny. But tests on the bullet seen on this page show that the fatal bullet could not have come from Klebold's gun, possibly Eric Harris's gun, but even that is inconclusive. They say it could have been someone else. I think it was a law enforcement officer, but I'm not prepared at this point in time. You know, without knowing absolutely who to even speculate, there seems to be at least at some level uh, a desire on, on Jeffco's part to keep us from having uh, the full truth about what went on. It appears that the order of Harris and Klebold's names and the injuries they inflicted on Daniel Robaugh were switched on this reference list. But once again, this list was only a quick reference. For investigators, not a final document. But Brian Rohrbaugh today said that that error, as the sheriff's department called it, did show up on the final document. So he says there are still a lot of questions, questions he does not believe will be answered unless there is a grand jury investigation. But again, the sheriff's department says that they are absolutely certain that Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris are the ones that killed Daniel Rohrbaugh and not a law enforcement officer. Adele, Cheryl Preheim and Golden, thank you. For the first time in history, Say ballistics released just this week prove that the sheriff's department knew all along that the fatal bullet did not come from Klebold's gun. They claim the ballistics show Eric Harris was not in a position to have fired the shot. Therefore, they believe their son was killed by law enforcement and that the sheriff wants to cover that up. There's just too many questions. There's been too much misinformation, too many lies told. They say this makes the pain of losing Daniel even worse. It makes it really difficult when the people that have the truth won't tell you when it involves the death of your child. Now, about 10 minutes ago, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department responded. They say they did not lie to the Robos, and they dispute the family's interpretation of this newly released information. Okay, thank you, Julie. Timothy McVeigh's executive. The Sheriff's Department have made an innocent mistake. Brian Rohrbaugh is suing the department. He believes a police officer shot his son. News Force Christina Yao joins us now. Now, Christina, Mr. Rohrbaugh has been studying the police, depart the police reports, and he thinks he's found something. That's right, and the sheriff's office all but admits its official report was probably wrong. 
In its official report released a year ago, the sheriff's department said Dylan Klebold shot and killed Daniel Rohrbaugh. But the Rohrbaugh family says new ballistics reports dispute that, adding credibility to their lawsuit. What now appears to be an obvious attempt to cover up what really happened to Dan, the sheriff's department lied about having ballistics confirming a bullet being fired by Klebold. Brian Rohrbaugh says he found what he calls the lie in a stack of documents newly released by court order. The department's official report said gunman Dylan Klebold, quote, shoots Daniel Rohrbaugh at close range, killing him instantly. But the new documents indicate the bullet in Daniel's abdomen was, quote, found to be consistent with the test fire bullet from a high point carbine, not Klebold's, but the gun Eric Harris used. Then it goes on to say it's even possible the bullet didn't come from Harris's gun. The sheriff's department won't admit it made a mistake, but does say. It appears that the order of Harris and Klebold's names and the injuries they inflicted on Daniel Robaugh were switched on this reference list. Meaning in a reference page, instead of listing Klebold as the one who shot Daniel in the stomach and chest, it should have listed Harris. But the department says which of the two gunmen who fired the fatal shot is not important. There is no question that Daniel Robaugh was shot and killed by Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. No witnesses has identified a law enforcement officer as shooting him. They think it's not relevant whether or not they lied in their report, and they lied to us. Brian Warbaugh says the latest contradiction is proof the department is covering up the truth. The document certainly raised questions, but Amy Brian Warbaugh concedes it does not prove that a law enforcement officer fired the fatal shot that killed his son. Thanks, Christina.